Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Colleen Mott from Greencast. We're a few minutes after one o'clock Eastern, so I'm gonna go ahead and get us started. I really appreciate you all joining and taking some time uh, out of your afternoon today to learn about your options for dealing with debt. So again, I'm Colleen from Greenpath, and uh, I have my colleague, Jesse Garrison, on the line who will be helping me to manage chat and questions today. Um, I did just get a note that someone cannot hear me. So if my sound is not working, um, please chat that in. If you, if you can hear me, if you could let me know, then we'll know if it's uh, one person's issue. Okay, we have several people who can hear. So if anybody cannot hear, uh, please email partnerexperience at greenpath.com and we'll do our best uh, to troubleshoot the issues that you're having. Those of you that can hear me all right, thank you so much for letting me know. All right, so like I said, we have uh, Jesse on the line today, uh, my colleague who will be helping to manage that chat. Um, know that we are recording today's session, so if you want to listen in later or share with others that is gonna be available to you, we'll email you out the recording after today. Um, and if you do have questions throughout the session, feel free to send them over through the chat function. Send them to all panelists, and I'll do my best to answer uh, as many as we possibly can uh, during today. All right, so let's get started. Greenpath Financial Wellness, we are a nonprofit, and next year we'll be celebrating our 60th anniversary. Our mission is to empower people to lead financially healthy lives, and in doing so, we provide a variety of different services, including one-on-one -on -one financial counseling, pre-purchase housing counseling, foreclosure prevention counseling, credit report reviews, and debt management services. Check us out online if you wanna learn more about who we are, our history, and the different services that we provide. I'm excited today to share with you what we're really good at, helping people determine an action plan for what to do next, to achieve their financial goals, and, and specifically what we're gonna talk about today, paying off debt. Coming up with a plan, solid plan to pay off your debt, it can really be life-changing. If someone is in debt and they're worried about it, that debt can really impact their ability to be financially healthy. It impacts your ability to save, it impacts your flexibility that you have with your finances, and it can really be a cause of a lot of stress. So if you can come up with a solid plan to pay the debt off and become more financially healthy, which really means you know, you're in control of your finances, you're ready for an emergency if one arises, you're working towards your financial goals, we know you're gonna sleep better, you're gonna feel less stressed, and you are going to be better able and ready to achieve financial goals that you have, you know, not just those goals that are related to money. So that's what we're really focused on today, your options for dealing with debt. Today's session is gonna teach you about the options to get control of debt, to come up with the plan that's best for you so that you can reduce your stress levels and feel confident in your plan for the future. Our agenda today is to start with the warning signs uh, that you might see if you are struggling with debt. And we're then gonna dive into some of the options that are available to handle the debt on your own, then options that are available by working directly with your creditors, and finally, options that are available uh, by working with uh, a third party. I want you to know that if you are struggling with debt right now, we have so much understanding and, and empathy for you. It's really tough for people to make ends meet in the best of times, and right now is not the best of times. Know that we at Green Path are here for you and you are not alone. What we're gonna cover today is general information, but if you wanna chat about your specific situation, you do have access to free financial counseling through Green Path. And I'll make sure that you know how to get in touch with us with one of our counselors so you can chat through the pros and cons of some of the different options that we're gonna talk about today as it relates to your specific situation. So let's get started. 
how do you know if you're overextended and you've got a problem? Typically, the path to overwhelming debt issues is gradual, but it's often marked with some specific milestones. So some of the warning signs that you'll want to look out for include being unsure of how much you owe to all your creditors altogether. If you ask yourself or you ask someone how much debt they have and they don't know, that fact can be very telling. Another worrying sign is when a person is only able to make the minimum payments. You know, today we know, because it's on our credit card statements, how long it's going to take us to pay down a debt if we do only make minimum payments. And seeing that information in print, you know, if it's showing that it's going to take you 10 years or 15 years or sometimes longer to pay that off, it can be really stressful and it, and it can be kind of one of those warning signs to recognize that you might need help and need to focus in on the debt. When you see your credit card balances start to go up, but your income's not, that can be indicative that more is being charged each month than is being made in the payments. That can be a warning sign. And then when cards become maxed out or you go over the limit, and then you start getting additional fees attached, the minimum payments can increase and the balances can start to get out of control. So if that happens and if payments start to get missed, then collection calls start. So if you or someone you, you know is experiencing any of these warning signs, that can just be an indicator that, you know, it's time to take a look at the financial picture and come up with a solid plan for what to do next. So that's really what we're going to focus on today. You know, it's possible that you're on this path or, you know, you see you, you have someone else in your life who is, and it can be difficult to know at that point what your options are and who you can trust. So again, today we're going to talk about some of the different options for resolving debt issues so that you have the tools that you need to be able to help yourself and others understand the resources that are available to them. Now, today we are going to be focused on the most part for unsec on unsecured debt, like credit cards, personal loans, but if your primary concern is your mortgage or your student loans, I want to start you off with some resources uh, to help you get some more information on those specifically, since that's not what we're going to be diving super deep into today. So, if you do have concerns with your mortgage, we have a mortgage assistance guide that you can download. And we've also done a webinar in the past called Navig Navigating a Housing Crisis. So we're going to send out links to those through the chat. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, copy and paste those links so you can download our mortgage assistance guide or listen into that, that Navigating a Housing Crisis webinar. If student loans concerns, I would encourage you to visit studentaid.gov, especially if they're federal loans, um, and go to Manage Loans. Uh, the, the tab that they have on studentaid.gov, and that's going to give you a lot of the information that is available for your options for student loan debt, whether you need to pause payments or reduce payments for a period of time. We've also done a webinar recently called Student Loan Strategies, uh, so that would be a, a good uh, webinar to listen into if your main concern is your student loan debt. So again, we're chatting these, um, these links out. Give them a quick copy and paste if that sounds like something you're interested in. All right, so let's keep moving with our agenda and take a look at our first option. How can a person resolve their debts using their own resources? The best place to start when you're looking to reduce or eliminate debt is to take a look at your budget. So I want you to think, do you have a budget? Is it actually written down? Do you follow it? You know, many people don't, but using a budget really can be life-changing, and especially if you are thinking about coming up with a solid plan to repay your debt, this is where you want to start kind of no matter what. The first thing you want to do to create a budget is just get it all down on paper today. So start with your income. Make a list of all your monthly household income. I encourage you to, to list out your net income, which means how much you actually have to work with each month the amount you're, you're taking home and, and depositing into your checking account after taxes and deductions come out. So make a list of your net income, then write down all of your expenses, all of your set expenses that don't change each month, 
um, all of the things that might change each month a little bit, like, you know, your gas and your groceries, give yourself a good estimate for those. Plug in all of the minimum payments for all of the debts that you have into that budget, and then subtract all of those bill and debt payments and expense payments from your income and see, you know, do you have a surplus? Do you have a deficit? So that's going to be step one, is just getting it all down onto paper. What I also want you to do, though, is take the step of tracking your expenses for a period of time. For the next 30 days, commit to writing down everything you spend your money on so that you can compare how you're actually spending back to this budget that you create for yourself today. You can, you know, estimate the amount that you spend on groceries each month today when you build your budget, but I want you to actually track how much you're spending over the next 30 days so you can compare and contrast and see, you know, does my spending align with where I, I thought it did, does it align with my goals, and then see if you might need to make some changes to those spending habits. Ultimately, throughout this process, too, you want to figure out, are there some areas within your spending where you do have some flexibility, where you might be able to free up some money each month to put towards the debt? Throughout this process, you know, really see, can I make some changes to my spending plan to free up some money. If you can do that, you can really start to accelerate paying the debt down, pay more than your minimum each month, and you'll be able to pay things down more quickly, save yourself some money. So we are gonna chat out a link to our budgeting worksheet if you wanna download that to help get you started with that budget today, just putting it all down on paper. We're also gonna chat out a link to our Aligning Priorities Workbook so if you've had some recent changes to your financial situation, maybe you've had a reduction in income or something like that, you can check out our Aligning Priorities workbook that has some good kind of tips if you need to figure out really what to focus on first if you can't focus on everything. So get that budget, track that spending. There's, you know, there's no wrong way to do it. It's really figuring out what works for you, if that's paper and pencil. There's also a lot of good apps out there. If you go to your app store and download, you know, search for expense manager, you're going to find a lot of different tools um, that you can use, you know, electronically as well to help you out. So you might want to check that out too. Liquidating assets is another strategy that's often used to pay off debt. It's only successful, of course, if you, you know, use the funds that you, you raise by liquidating the asset to pay off the debt, not to increase your spending. So think about any assets that you might have that you could tap into. Do you have a vehicle you could sell? Jewelry or video games that you're ready to part with? Other items? We, generally, when we talk about assets, we don't want you dipping into your retirement account to pay down your debt. You know, definitely before you take that step, talk with your you know, trusted retirement advisor and review your other options before you do take that step. When we think about assets, though, you may also think about your home. If you own a home and you have some equity in that home, you might be wondering if tapping into that equity would work for you. Now, some pros of that is that, you know, if you get a home equity loan, you could combine a lot of the other debts that you have into typically one payment with a lower interest rate than what you might be paying today on your credit cards, for example. Know, though, that if you're turning this unsecured credit card debt into secure debt, uh, your house is the collateral. And if you end up not paying on that, you risk foreclosure. If you don't pay on a credit card, you don't risk foreclosure. But if you turn that debt into you know, your home equity, if you use your home equity, you could risk that. So if you tap into your home equity, you really have to be committed to changing any habits if you have them that may have gotten you into debt in the first place. If you end up with that credit card debt again, you know, plus your home equity loan payments, you're going to be in worse shape than when you started. So if it's something that you're considering, be sure you do your due diligence, talk about the pros and cons, and, and maybe consider other options that might be available to you to still meet your goal that you have. And now, sticking with options to handle the debt on your own, one strategy that's really popular is the debt snowball. 
You may have heard about the debt snowball through Dave Ramsey. He's really popularized this way to pay off debt. Um, and it really means that rather than attacking your debts in order of interest rate, for example, say like from the highest rate to the lowest rate, the debt snowball has you pay off your debts in order of outstanding balance. You start with the smallest balance debt, you get that paid off, and then you tackle the next debt on the list. You pay minimum payments on all of your debts except that lowest balance one, so you're keeping all your accounts current, but you put any extra money you can towards that smallest balance debt. Once that's paid off, you snowball or add that debt's payment onto the monthly payment for the next debt on your list, and you continue that until all your debts are paid in full. Really the goal and, and the beauty of the debt snowball is that you get some really quick wins. That keeps you mentally motivated as you see debt start to be knocked off your list. You feel good about making progress to your, towards your goals and that, that keeps you going. So let's look at an example of how the debt snowball would work. You would list out all of your debts onto a spreadsheet. So list out the name of the debt, the balance, the minimum monthly payment, and the interest rate. So here we have five different debts that aren't listed in any particular order. We're just getting them down on paper, getting them down onto the spreadsheet. It's about $12,000 in debt. Current minimum monthly payments are $476. So we've listed them out in no particular order, but then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort or organize them by the balance, smallest to largest. So now we still have those same five debts, but they're listed in order of balance, smallest to largest. What we're gonna do next is figure out how much extra money we might have to put towards that lowest balance debt. So in this situation, we've gone through our budget, we've uh, identified areas where we might be able to cut some spending or make adjustments, and we've freed up an extra $100 a month. We're gonna put that towards the lowest balance debt. So we've added $100 onto our $20 minimum monthly payment towards the medical debt. We're still gonna continue the minimum monthly payments on every other debt, but we're gonna sock that 120 each month towards the medical debt until it gets paid off. In five months, that debt's gone. Now we've got the $120 that was going towards the medical debt, and we can add it to our minimum monthly payment of $36 onto the personal loan. Now we're sending 156 to the personal loan, and another five months, that's paid off. Now you're sending $216, you've added the 156 onto the credit card payment, now you're sending $216 towards your smallest balance credit card. You can really see how these wins are gonna keep you motivated. In 10 months, you've got two debts knocked off and you feel like you're really sending a good chunk of money each month towards your credit card. It would take six months to pay that off. Now we've got the 216, in addition to the minimum monthly payment on the next credit card, going to uh, the, the second balance credit cards, we've got 336 going there each month. You've only got two debts left to focus on. And in another five months, that's paid off. You're left with your final debt. You can put the full amount of the 576 towards that debt. And in another five months, a little over two years total, you're debt free. And now you have $576 to put towards other goals each month, to bulk up your retirement account, to save for a vacation, to put in your kid's college education fund. Whatever your goal is, you've got this extra funds to be able to, to do it. You know, think about too, throughout this process, if you can free up additional funds, you know, say you decide you're gonna cut cable and move to just one or two streaming services and cut you know, $60 a month from your budget, like I recently did. That's an extra $60 you can put towards the snowball and get the debt paid off and become debt-free even faster. So that's the debt snowball method. Another option that is available though that some people like is called debt stacking. Now, instead of a debt snowball where you pay off lowest balance to highest balance, with debt stacking, you start with the highest interest rate debt and you pay off the, the balances in order of interest rate highest to lowest. This method is good because it saves you the most in interest payments, um, but the con of debt stacking is that 
your highest interest rate debt might also be your highest balance debt. So it might take you a really long time to cross any debt fully off your list. And you might end up feeling frustrated that you're spending all this time and energy without having any sort of mental victory of, of crossing a debt off your list. So what method should you use? It's really up to you. You know, you want to use the method that is going to motivate you that you're going to stick with. You, you know, can feel free to test them out. If you want to start with debt stacking because you know that's going to save you money, but you end up feeling that frustration that we talked about, you can switch to the snowball method. Just make sure you're always paying at least the minimums on everything. All right, so those were the main options that I wanted to talk about as far as really tackling things fully on your own. Uh, but the other resource that I want to chat about today is, is communicating with your creditors. Now, this can sometimes feel a little bit intimidating, so I want to talk about a few options that might be available uh, by working with your creditors, as well as some considerations for talking with them. So the first thing that I want to talk about um, is refinancing. This is an option that you would access, you know, directly through a creditor. Uh, and a refinance essentially means you get a whole new loan in place of your old one. Uh, but you often get a lower interest rate and often a lower monthly payment as well. Both of those could help you accelerate in, in paying off your debt. You know, the lower interest rate would save you money uh, and the lower payment would mean that you could potentially free up funds to put towards other higher interest debt. You know, you could free up funds to put extra money towards your snowball, for example. So if you are thinking about a refinance, you want to talk with your lender. See if it's an option that makes sense for you. There can sometimes be significant costs associated with a refinance, and it's something you need to qualify for credit-wise. So you want to be sure it's the right fit for you in both the short term and the long term. So you could talk with your lender, see if that might be an option. And in the same vein, you could also investigate a credit card balance transfer. If you have credit cards with a really high interest rate, you could see, do I qualify for a, a credit card that has a lower interest rate? Um, sometimes they even have like a 0% interest for an introductory period of time, maybe a year, and you would move your high interest debt to this lower interest credit card. There's pros and cons to this too. Sometimes there's fees that you'll want to take a look at when you do that balance transfer and see what those, you know, what those fees are, see if it makes sense. Um, you also would want to look at when the zero interest rate would expire. And based on the amount that you can afford to put towards that debt each month, would you have it paid off by the time the interest rate expires? And if you don't, what is the interest rate going to jump up to? So, Think about all those things before you uh, choose to, to move your money in that way. It can be helpful too to com just communicate with your creditors, especially right now, ask about hardship programs or internal repayment plans that they might offer. Right now, again especially, they're more likely to have some hardship payment options than they normally do because so many people are struggling right now and are in unique circumstances. They might have some options open to you um, that they wouldn't normally. So know that some of the solutions or options that might be available to you will likely be temporary, but if what you're struggling with right now is temporary, they could be a good fit. So when you call, ask the representative who's answered if they have the authority to make adjustments. Can they reduce your interest? Can they remove fees? Can they make an adjustment to your payment? And if they don't, ask if you can speak to somebody who does have that authority because it, it can be really discouraging if you end up speaking with multiple people, you know, have to keep repeating your story and situation, being transferred from person to person. So if you can, you know, do what you can to get the person who can help you as quickly and efficiently as possible, you'll, you'll be thankful for that. So ask to speak with the decision maker. Um, 
and know you know what your options are, what you can afford. This goes back to that budget. Make sure before you you communicate with your creditor, you've gone through that budgeting process, and you really know where you stand and feel like you have a good understanding of where you're at and what you can afford. You you want to know if they do have you know a solution that they present to you. You'll want to know is this something that I'll actually be able to stick with and afford. Ask yourself too, you know, when you're talking about solutions with them, is this a temporary issue that needs a temporary solution or do I need something more long term? This is going to help you know, you know, if they offer you a temporary payment reduction, is that going to meet my need or is this just going to be a small band-aid on a much larger problem? Know that you really want to be confident that you'll be able to stick to any arrangement that you agree to. Sometimes creditors will offer you a workout option, but it's only one option, a one and done for the length of your debt. So if you agree to an arrangement and then fail to follow through, they might not have a second chance option available to you. Make sure too that you keep really good records and keep your paper trail throughout this process. Record who you spoke with, when did you speak with them, what did you agree to, uh, you know, write down any actions that you need to take, any confirmation of arrangements that you need to do so that you can be sure to follow up. Now, I want to review a few of the terms that you may see or hear if you're working, if you're working uh, directly with one of your lenders and talking about your options. We are going to chat out to you a link to our glossary of financial terms. So I don't have, you know, the written definitions on all of these slides, but if you go to our glossary of financial terms, it'll have uh, a lot of what we're talking about today listed there. So let's start with a deferment. A deferment is usually available when a type of hardship has occurred. It allows a person typically to stop making loan payments for a set period of time. Usually it's because of a specific hardship situation. So, you know, for example, you know, student loans can often be deferred if you go back to school or if you become employed. You know, interest may or may not continue to accrue on, on the debt. Um, when the payments aren't required, it's important that you speak with your lender to know the specific terms of your deferment. A forbearance usually allows you to adjust payments to a lower amount for a period of time. And typically with the forbearance, interest will continue to accrue. You may be allowed to make, you know, interest-only payments or cover the interest during that time so your debt load isn't in increasing while the payments are lowered. Um, with the forbearance, as with the deferment, you would apply specifically for your lender. Uh, specifically through your lender, and they would let you know whether that's something you qualify uh, for or not. Uh, and if you do qualify for forbearance, know that the time frame really can vary, you know, based on your situation, based on your lender, um, and the specific conditions are, are determined by the lender. So this is just some really general information. The specifics you need to work out directly with your lender. A loan extension could be another option. This is an arrangement between you and your lender, and it's just like it sounds. It would extend the term or the length of the loan. It typically allows you to skip payments, which would then be added on to the end of the loan term. So it could give you some temporary payment relief if that's what you need. Another option could be a debt consolidation loan. This would be a brand new loan that would provide enough money to pay off your other debt, so that going forward, you would just pay one payment on one loan at a fixed interest rate. This can be a really good option, but you've got to live within your means going forward to avoid starting that debt cycle all over again. Um, again, it's kind of like with that home equity loan, you, you want to be sure that you're changing your habits so that you can get the debt paid off and stay debt free. Now, if any one of these options sound like they might be a good fit for you, talk with your lender and um, they'll be able to let you know if this is something that, uh, that you could qualify for. 
you know, medical debt can be a bit of a different animal. I did want to touch on it today, chat about just a few specifics if medical debt is what you're, you're primarily struggling with. Now, these main tips I got from an NPR interview with Jennifer Bosco. She's an attorney with the nonprofit National Consumer Law Center. And, you know, one of the main things that she really recommends is call the hospital, call the doctor, see if they have some sort of financial assistance available to you. Nonprofit hospitals are required by law to have assistance policies in place. And if your income qualifies you, you could get your bill cut or you could get it totally forgiven in some situations. So ask, you know, call and ask, that never hurts. You can also ask for a lower price. You know, there's so many different prices out there for different medical procedures based on who's paying and what insurance you have. So don't be afraid to ask for a lower price than what you've paid. Don't also be afraid to ask for a payment plan. If you can't pay the bill in full at once, go back to that budget. See what you could afford to pay each month and ask for a payment plan that you know you can afford so that you have something in place, a good arrangement in place, so that you know that you're not going to be sent to collections, you're not going to be getting phone calls, you can make a payment arrangement that's solid, that fits within your budget. In general, it's really recommended that you don't put your medical debt on a credit card. That shifts the debt away from the hospital and puts it towards the credit card. So it might be at a much higher interest rate if you put it on a credit card and you will lose, you know, any protection that you may have had by owing the hospital or the doctor's office. Once it's on a credit card, they've been paid. They have no incentive to work with you anymore and you lose any protection there. Um, also, medical debt isn't as damaging on a, to a credit score as credit card debt is. Uh, for example, so when you talk about the protection there, uh, you'll have less of an impact with the medical debt than you do with the credit card debt. So those are some of the reasons why, in general, you wouldn't want to pay it off with the credit card. Ultimately, prioritize, too. If you can't pay everything, you can go back to that Align Priorities workbook I talked about, but know that your home is always going to, your home, your food, those types of things are always going to be more important. Um, and the things that you want to pay first. All right, so we've talked a bit about how you could handle the debt by yourself. We've talked about options uh, that could be available to you if you reach out directly to your creditors. Now, I want to chat about some of the options that might be available by working with a third party. And I've seen some chat questions come in about debt settlement, so that's what we're going to talk about now. This is the first option I want to talk about when we're going um, and, and talking about a, a third party. A, a settlement is an agreement between you and your creditor that allows you to pay off the debt for a reduced amount. The benefit of settling is that you pay off the debt for the reduced amount, so if you owe $10,000, for example, uh, to a creditor, there are some times where you could, you know, settle in some situations for, say, $6,000 if you can do the $6,000 all at once. And they would say, all right, that, you know, we've got a deal. If you can pay us that amount all at once, we'll consider it settled and you won't owe us, you won't owe us anymore. So that's the benefit. You know, you can get it done, put it behind you, but there are a lot of risks to debt settlement. So I want to talk about those. Now, while you can in some situations, you know, negotiate a settlement on your own, I've put this option in the working with a third party category because there's a lot of debt settlement companies out there and they do a really good job of advertising and telling you what you want to hear. When you work with a third party debt settlement company, they will have you stop paying uh, money towards your creditors and they have you put you they have you put money into a trust or or an escrow account and once that account has accumulated enough money the settlement company is going to contact your creditors to settle in cash for an amount less than the outstanding amount that you owe 
you are paying the funds towards your creditor to, to settle the debt. Um, you're also paying the debt settlement company. So they take their fee off the top. So it can oftentimes take you longer to save the necessary funds to actually settle the debt. It can take months. You know, if you set up with a settlement company, it can take months before your creditors are even contacted. In the meantime, because you're not sending money to your creditors, you're sending your money to the settlement company, your creditor is wondering, where's my money? And they might contact you, they might send you to collections, they might threaten you with legal action, and they're gonna be reporting to the credit bureaus that you're late on payment. So it can really damage your credit, not just the active settlement, but the fact that you have missed payments to your creditors before the settlement is what can really hurt your credit. Um, and again, you, you may still be open to that collection activity, to that legal action throughout the process. There can also be tax implications for settling the debt. So if you have debt that's forgiven, if we use that example of you owing $10,000 and settling for $6,000, the $4,000 that you did not pay could be treated as income by the IRS essentially, and you may need to pay taxes on that. So a lot of times people aren't aware of that until they get, you know, that 1099 form and, and realize those, those tax implications. So I thought you might be interested to see some actual terms of a settlement agreement uh, as they're laid out. This information that we have here was actually directly copied from a debt settlement agreement that was shared with us from a person who contacted us after they realized that the settlement really wasn't what they thought it was gonna be. And they contacted us for counseling and to see what other options might be available to them um, because they were getting phone calls from their creditors and they had paid all this money to their settlement company and realized that nothing had happened yet. So we do the, get those calls. Uh, we will you know, help you figure out what your best course of action is next. Um, but wanted to share some of the agreement terms with you so that if this is something you're considering, you've kind of got you know, both eyes open going into it. So it has some information about the tax implications. Again, usually this is pretty fine print that they're not gonna go over with you ahead of time. They're gonna rely on you to read. Um, you'll see too that it says that you know, any account may be removed from the program <clears throat> at the settlement company's discretion. So there's no guarantee that you're gonna settle a debt when you work with the settlement company. It's all up to the creditor. It also discloses their funds where they agree, you would agree to pay 40% uh, of the amount that's saved. Um, and that can often be on top of an additional, you know, kind of regular fee that they charge. So it can actually end up being pretty costly when you think about it, where it's not just that you're, you know, saving this certain amount, but you're also paying out this, uh, this hefty fee when any, whenever it's, uh, the debt is actually settled. So if you think a settlement might make sense for you, if you came into a substantial amount of cash and you wanna see if this is an option, contact your creditor yourself first. And know though that you know, the risk uh, to your credit and tax implications really do remain even if you settle on your own and not with a third party. Um, so what I'd encourage you to do first if this is something you're considering is contact a credit counselor see what other options might be available to you out there so that you can weigh the pros and cons of everything, really be confident in the choice that you're making for handling the debt. Another option for working with a third party, but to repay the debt 100% in full is a debt management plan. Now, a debt management plan is a service that we offer here at Green Path. It's typically offered by nonprofit consumer credit counseling agencies, so we're not the only ones who offer it, um, but it is a program that we have available. Now, again, it works to repay the debt totally in full. When you start a DMP, essentially, you work with the counseling agency who provides you with coaching, reviews you with you all your options first um, to determine if this DMP would be a good fit. And then if you decide to, to start on the DMP, 
the counseling agency would contact creditors on your behalf and essentially they've got arrangements in place with those creditors to be able to get you concessions, which typically means a significantly reduced interest rate, late fees and over limit fees waived if you've been charged those, and, and oftentimes a lower payment as well. You make deposits to the counseling agency based on your pay schedule. The counseling agency sends out the funds to your creditors every single month, and that arrangement continues until the balance is fully paid off. The benefits of the program are you get one payment, essentially. You know, it's that consolidation aspect of it. You make the one deposit to the agency, which covers all your debts. You get support throughout the process from the counseling team. That lower interest and waive fees is gonna save you a lot of time and money. The lower payments can be helpful because it frees up money uh, within your budget. So if you have a budget deficit or if you, you know, need to save for an emergency fund, those lower payments could help you to do that. And typically over the length of the debt management plan, credit is improved. So those are some of the benefits of the debt management plan. We do have on our website a DMP calculator. Um, we'll send out a link to that through the chat that you can copy and paste and, and plug in. And I have included an example here of someone plugging in their debt into our debt calculator, debt management plan calculator. Um, this is, it really gives you a super general idea of what a DMP might be able to do for you. What I plugged in is an example of someone who had $30,000 in credit card debt. So a heftier amount than our debt snowball example. But what this calculator assumes is a couple things. It assumes that you are repaying your debt currently at a 24% interest rate. So that $30,000 in credit card debt, average of 24% interest. And then it assumes that on our debt management plan, you would have an 8% interest rate on average. So taking all those things into consideration, if you had $30,000 in debt, the DMP could save you over 13 grand, as well as 103 months or eight and a half years. So say on $30,000 in debt, your monthly payment would be around $600 a month. Think of if you paid off that $600, that $600 a month, eight and a half years faster. That is eight and a half years of an additional $600. That's a ton of money. So the DMP, you know, it's not a good fit for everybody, but it can be a valuable option, especially if you've tried to repay debt on your own and you've been unsuccessful. You know, if you're using your own resources, but you really feel like you're just spinning your wheels because your interest rates are super high, um, if you don't feel like you have the motivation to do it on your own, you know, those are all scenarios where a DMP could be a good fit for you. So that's another option for working with a third party. Uh, one option for dealing with debt that I want to make sure we touch on is bankruptcy. It's, you know, a difficult thing for a lot of people to think about, but there are times and situations where bankruptcy intervention may be recommended and maybe the best option. Essentially, bankruptcy is a legal proceeding in which people who cannot pay their bills get a fresh start. We are not lawyers here at Greenpath, uh, so be sure if this is something you are considering, uh, consult with a bankruptcy attorney and see what it might uh, or might not be able to do, be able to do for you. Um, because it can, you know, stop foreclosure it can allow you an opportunity to catch up on missed payments. It can prevent repossession, stop wage garnishment, restore, prevent utility shutoff. But it has some limitations. You know, it's probably not going to eliminate your mortgage or your other secured loans like an auto loan. It's probably not going to eliminate child support, alimony, student loans, fines, taxes. And if you have co-signers on your, your loans or cards, it may not protect them. So consult with an attorney, see what it may or may not be able to do for you to know if it's, if it's the right option. There are two bankruptcy options that I'll briefly cover. Um, the first one is Chapter 7, and it is the most common bankruptcy. It's 60 to 70% of, of bankruptcy filings. 
and it's also often known as straight bankruptcy or liquidation. Um, typically, it requires debtors to give up property that is then sold to pay creditors, but you typically also can keep property that is deemed exempt. A lawyer would be able to talk through your specific situation, what you might be able to keep or not keep. There's also a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, which is also known as debt reorganization. And that kind of puts you on a payment plan um, that allows you to keep property that might have otherwise been lost, um, but you got that repayment um, plan that's under the supervision of, of the court. So those are the main types of bankruptcy. Know that bankruptcy remains on your credit report for seven to 10 years. So credit in the immediate future after your bankruptcy is gonna be more difficult to obtain. It's gonna be more expensive, meaning your interest rates will be higher. Um, it'll probably be available with lower limits than you might have uh, received in the past. But credit can be improved. That's one of the good things about our uh, credit scores. We can improve them if we use uh, our credit wisely. So know that it's not the end of the world. After bankruptcy, life is not over. Uh, you can rebuild if you use credit wisely and make smart choices going forward. All right, we've covered a lot of options today. If you're not sure what's right for you, credit counseling. We'll be able to go through all of the options with you, um, review the pros and cons as it relates to your income, expenses, and debts so that you can figure out a good plan of attack. Counseling is a great place to start when you realize you wanna make a change. We're gonna chat out right now our request a call link. So you can click on, you can fill out a form and it will, um, you'll get an email and one of our Green Pass counselors will reach out to you within 48 hours. Uh, you can also just give us a call. We'll chat our, our phone number to be able to do that. So whether you wanna just give us a call and go through a session or request that a counselor reach out to you. Um, you've got your options there. Uh, and essentially, we'll talk about your goals. We'll help you make a budget and look for ways to save. We'll look at your credit together and we'll get you an action plan so you can figure out what to do next. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time to dig into your debt options today. You all took a really good, strong first step and I hope we've given you some tools that you can start to use uh, right now. Now, I'm gonna stay on the line for questions. If you've got a log off, um, just a heads up that a survey link is going to appear when you exit the session. We really appreciate you filling it out um, to let us know your experience today so that we can continue to improve um, these types of offerings. Um, but thank you all so much for attending and uh, we'll take a look at questions. Um, Jesse, who's been manning our chat here, uh, any common questions that came in that I can address? I do have a couple of great questions. Um, first one is if you pay off all the debt on the credit cards and then close them, does that affect the credit score? Yes, good question. It can. So your credit score is compromised of, uh, comprised of a few different kind of categories. The most important thing you can do for your credit score is pay your bills on time. That's 35% of your credit score. So throughout your debt repayment journey, if you're paying all your debts, you know, at least the minimum payments on time, that's gonna be helpful to your score. Another factor though of your credit score is the amount that you owe compared to the limit that you have available to you. The higher you get on your balances to your limit, the lower your credit score is gonna get in that particular category. Uh, when you are, you know, when you have your cards maxed out and you're using 100% of the, the credit that's available to you, that's a red flag to lenders that looks risky to them. So as you start to pay your debt down, you may start to see your credit score go up because that, that utilization percentage is better essentially. Um, just FYI, in general, we typically recommend that you never charge more than 
of the limit that's available to you. So if you have a, a you know, a limit of $1,000, you would never charge more than $300 on that card. Now, if you pay your debt down and you, what's that? Oh, I just said thank you, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you know, if you pay your debt down and you, uh, you know, are, are debt-free on those cards, now it looks like you have 100% of the credit that's available to you. But if you close that card down, that limit's gone. So that can hurt your score. Sure, you know, everyone's situation is different. That's the, um, you know, in general, the answer. Um, it might make sense, though, for you to close your cards, even if your credit takes a hit, because maybe you know you can't trust yourself with all those open cards. So in your situation, though it might hurt your score in the short term, it's the right fit for you. Um, so just, you know, weigh the entire picture um, before you make a decision. Thanks, Jesse. What else do we have? Perfect. Next one was a follow-up, and it may be from the same person. Um, what if the credit card company closes a zero balance account for inactivity? Yeah, that I have heard of that happening. Um, if your main concern is having that limit stay open because of, you know, because you're really concerned about your credit score and having a very high credit score, um, what you can do is, you know, you've got those cards, and you, if you want to keep them all open, make sure they're not closed for inactivity. Um, you could make it a policy for yourself to charge, you know, a tank of gas or, um, you know, a trip to uh, the store each month on each card and show consistent activity. Um, to, to potentially prevent that. Now, if that's something that you do, I think it's a really good idea to set up, see if you can set up automatic payments uh, and set up automatic payments for the full balance so that you know if you're using all your cards in this way, you will continue to be sure they're paid each month and the balance is paid in full each month so that you're not charged interest. Um, and that could be a way of, of consistently showing that activity each month. Excellent. Next question we had, what options do I have to lower retail credit card debt? Particularly, how can I get the retailer to lower the extremely high interest rate? It's a really good question. You can call and ask them. You know, we have that slide about contacting your creditors. It, you, you know, it's not going to hurt to ask if they have, you know, a hardship interest rate that they could provide you with. Typically, those interest rates are going to be reduced for a short-term period of time, um, but they might have programs available to you that you could qualify for. So you can give them a call and ask them. The debt management plan could be an, also a good option for you. If you contact your creditor and they don't have any options available to you and you realize, you know, I am spinning my wheels, maybe you don't qualify for a balance transfer on the credit card or a consolidation loan doesn't make sense for you. Those are some of the other options you could take a look at those things don't make sense for you, you know, you could look at a debt management plan and see what type of interest rate a creditor is willing to offer with a debt management plan. In most cases, uh, a counseling agency, a debt management plan through a counseling agency, you are going to be able to get better rates than you would be able to access on your own because counseling agencies, especially like Greenpath, we've been around for 60 years. We've got a good track record. They know that when we set someone up on a program, they're going to get their money back, and so they're willing to make those uh, those concessions uh, uh, and get those lower interest rates. So those are some of the different things that you could try. Next question we have is, what are your thoughts about communicating with creditors that I owe on long overdue debt that have gone into collections? I'm attempting to raise my credit score while be trying to become debt free. Is it worth contacting them? Awesome. So that's a really good question. I am going to encourage you to reach out to us and go through a counseling session. So we can take a look at the specifics of who you owe, uh, how long you've owed it for, how long it's been on the credit report for, um, 
because I think that really, you know, that really depends. Um, but it's an awesome idea to, you know, if you can come up with a plan to get those knocked off, that is going to improve your credit. Um, it's really important to know, though, you know, exactly who owns the debt and who you should be paying. Sometimes when you have debts that go into collections, they end up being sold from collection agency to collection agency. Um, so we can, you know, talk with you and, and help you figure out how to make sure you know you're sending your money to the right place, to who you actually, you know, owe it and owns that debt today, um, and have the best plan of attack for that. Okay, if I could just add to that, Colleen, I would. Yeah, that'd be great. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I would definitely uh, recommend giving Green Path a call as well. Think of it this way. Um, you can have a free and confidential practice conversation with us before you call creditors, if that might make it easier or, or less stressful for you. And if there's a good program that we could help you with as far as the debt management plan and you don't have to make those calls to the collectors, we can do that for you. It might be something to consider. I love that, Jesse. Thank you. All right, we are two minutes to two, so we will do um, one more question. I know we haven't been able to get to all of them, unfortunately, today, um, but please contact us and go through that session, and your counselor will be able to answer your question and give you some more information. Um, do you have one final question, Jesse? I do have one more. What is the difference between a debt management plan and an out of loan for debt consolidation? Is there a huge difference? Yeah, so a debt consolidation loan would be a, a brand new loan that would show up on your credit report that you would need to apply for at a financial institution, go through the underwriting process for and qualify for. So, you know, if you're looking for a debt consolidation loan from your financial institution, they are going to look at, you know, anything they normally look at when you uh, apply for a loan. They're going to look at your income, um, your other debts, your credit score, where you stand with all of that to see, you know, if I lend this person the consolidation loan, can I trust that they're going to repay it? And then essentially you would, you know, if you got a debt consult, if you had credit card debt of $10,000, totaling $10,000 on five different credit cards, you get a consolidation loan for $10,000, you pay off the credit card debt, that's gone, now you just owe on the consolidation loan. One payment, one interest rate. So you're working directly with your financial institution to arrange all that. With the debt management plan, you would still owe all your same creditors. We're not taking that debt on for you at GreenPath, we're not giving you a loan. You still owe your creditors, you still owe the same amount to them, we just kind of act as, as the middleman, and as of being that middleman, we can negotiate the rates for you, the interest rates, um, your fees, things like that, so that you're still, you're paying green path worse than sending the money to your individual creditors, so you still all owe them the same as you did. Um, we're just kind of that, uh, that middle person that allows you to get those concessions those uh, lowered interest and fees. Hopefully that made sense. That was a clear difference. All right. Well, I know we're at two. Uh, I, I really appreciate you all taking the time to dig into your debt options. Um, I uh, appreciate it. I uh, thank you for attending. Um, you know, again, when you exit, there will be the survey for you to fill out. Um, but I hope this gave you some good tips again. Think about the future, you know, what your debt is paid off, what are you gonna do with that money? Um, that'll really help to keep you motivated. So thank you all so much. I wish you uh, continued success in your financial wellness journey. Have a great day, everybody.